This is a sample from our training at itdvds.com. If you'd like to learn more, please go to itdvds.com. Now let's configure DHCP failover. So we can right click on our IP version 4. I'm going to do this on DHCP 01 and go to configure failover. So we're going to configure this by scope and we can do multiple scopes at the same time if we want. You can see by default it's going to select all the scopes. I get to uncheck that and just highlight two scopes for example if that's what I want to do just by holding down control and clicking on them or if I just want to do one scope specifically I can always just right click on that scope and go to configure failover so I'll do it for 192.168.7.0 let's go ahead and click next we'll type in the name of the partner server we could also click on add server and select it our partner server is going to be dhcp 02itvscorpcom so I'll go ahead and click next here we're going to specify the relationship name. So each time we create a, a failover relationship, it creates an, a unique name that's actually stored in Active Directory, and the default is going to be the server name that we're setting it up on DHCP01, and then a dash, and then the partner server DHCP02. So that works for me. I'm going to go ahead and leave that. It does need to be unique for each failover relationship. And we have a couple options here, maximum client lead time and state switchover interval. We'll talk about those in a second. Those have to do with taking ownership when there's a failure. But first, let's take a look at the modes. We have load balance and hot standby. So load balance is going to be an active-active setup where both of our servers, in our case DHCP01 and DHCP02, are going to be serving our DHCP clients. So they're both able to hand out IP addresses. And here we can specify the load balance percentage so let's say the local server, in our case, since we're setting this up on DHCP01, that's the local. Let's say I want that to carry most of the load, like three-fourths of the load. I can set it at 75%, and then my partner server, which is DHCP02, carries 25% of the load. So if four requests come in, three of them are going to be served by DHCP01, and one of them are going to be served by DHCP02. But it's active-active, so both servers are actively handing out IP addresses. The other option is going to be hot standby where we have one server like DHCP01 doing all the or handling all the DHCP requests while DHCP02 is just sitting there waiting for DHCP01 to fail and then DHCP02 can take control of the scope. And when we set up hot standby we specify addresses reserved for the standby server. This is so that the standby server has a certain number of IP addresses just for itself that it can hand out while it's waiting for what was the active server like DHCP01 to go into a partner down state and then for the maximum client lead time to expire. So if we think that 5% isn't enough for you know an hour to go by to handle DHCP clients if there is a failure of our our active server DHCP01 then we might want to increase this so that our standby has enough IP addresses. So now let's talk a little bit more about these two maximum client lead time and state switchover interval. So if there's a failure so let's say we're doing a hot standby here and DHCP01 is our active DHCP server DHCP02 is our standby and again you know, we can figure that here the role of the partner server is standby. If we want to make DHCP02 the active one we would just change that to active and then DHCP01 would be the standby, but let's let's stick it at DHCP02 is the standby. Well, if DHCP01 has a problem, let's say it loses network connection or just completely crashes and goes down, then what happened is DHCP01 is going to be put into a communications interrupted state because DHCP02 doesn't have any way to verify what actually happened to DHCP01. It can't contact it. Now if it can contact it and figure out the DHCP server service is just down, then it will be able to put DHCP01 into a partner down state. But right now we're talking about this thing crashed. It has no way to verify what happened to it. So it gets put in a communications interrupted state. Well, we would manually have to go in and put it into a partner down state unless we check this box for state switchover interval. So if we check this and it's in a communications interrupted state for 60 minutes, then it will automatically put DHCP01 into a partner down state. When it's in a partner down state, the maximum client lead time has to expire. So it's going to wait another 60 minutes in our case. And once that time's expired, then DHCP02 
will assume full control of the scope and at that point basically become the active server and then DHCP 01, of course it's down, will be the passive server, also called the standby. Now the maximum client lead time is also the amount of time that one server can extend a lease for a DHCP client beyond the time known by the partner server. So when there is that loss of communication between DHCP 01, DHCP 02, DHCP 02 can get people along or get people down the road or DHCP clients by extending the lease out for an hour without DHCP 01 knowing about it because most likely DHCP 01 is down. Now that also has to do in our load balance scenario whether or not if one of the servers goes down if it's automatically put into that partner down state and if there's that loss of communication the maximum lead time, client lead time comes into play as well as far as the amount of time that the server that's up can extend at least without that communication with our other server. Now when we set up this failover relationship, the leases that are handed out by our DHCP server that are replicated back and forth so that each server knows what the other server is doing. And we can ha add a shared secret in here which is like a password so that there is some level of authentication with that replication. Now the replication is encrypted and it uses port 647. When we set this up there's a couple firewall rules that are added. So I'll just go ahead and type in a shared secret and click on next and finish. Okay and it was completed successfully. Okay and we can go down here and see we might have to refresh. Right click uh, refresh and there's our scope. So it's now on both these servers, DHCP 01 and 02, and they're both actively serving DHCP requests. Let's bring up a, a server or just a desktop in this particular subnet. That's a DHCP client. Okay, there it is. I brought up desktop 205. You can see what IP address it grabbed. And if we go over here and look on DHCP 01, that lease is there also. So that lease is being replicated. And another thing to note is that if we're using a DHCP relay agent, we want to make sure we have both of these DHCP servers listed. For example, here's my DHCP relay agent. Let's go to the properties. I just have one. I want to be sure and add both of my servers. So my other one is dot two two seven. Now let's go over to desktop two o five. Okay, here we are on desktop two o five. I've done an IP config all here and we can see, okay, it did get that IP address and the DHCP server is 192.168.6.225. So that's DHCP 01. Now let's take DHCP 01 down. Now I'm just going to disconnect it from the network. Okay, I've disconnected it from the network. Now let's do an IP config space slash release. So this is going to release its DHCP address and now let's do a renew. So it's going to try to get an IP address again from a DHCP server. Okay, it was able to get its IP address again. Let's do a IP config space slash all. So we can see now the DHCP server is 192.168.6.227. So the failover worked great. And 227 is DHCP 02. So let's go over here and run the get dash DHCP server v4 failover and we're gonna run it we can't get to DHCP 01 because it's down so let's run it against DHCP 02 and we can see okay here's the name of our failover relationship the partner server the mode uh, the load balance percent for this particular server DHCP 02 and we can see the state is communication interrupted so because auto state transition is set to true after 60 minutes go by this is going to change to partner down and then when that happens after the max client lead time expires in another hour it's this server DHCP 02 is going to assume control of the the whole scope and that's mainly going to pertain when we have an active passive set up when we've got it configured for standby and not load balance but in a load balance scenario what it does affect is how long the lease is that it can hand out so our max lead time is an hour and if we go over here and let's take a look at the lease on DHCP 02 
The lease expiration is 8-7-2017 at 4.05. And I renewed this IP address when we run that IP config space slash renew at 3.05 p.m. So it was just able to extend that lease out an hour because it cannot communicate with the HCP01. And we can also go to the properties of the scope and go over to failover and get this information as well. So we can see the state of the server lost contact with partner. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, DHCP01 back up or just connect it back to the network. And if we go to the properties here, failover, we can see, okay, the state of the server is now normal as well as the partner server. So that happened automatically. So again, the important thing to know that is if this auto state transition is not set to true, then we need to manually set it to a partner down state when there is a communication interrupted failure. And to do that, we can go to the properties of IP version 4 here. Let's go over to failover. And here's our failover rela relationship. We click on edit and we'll be able to click this button to change to partner down. This is also where we can change our load balance mode, uh, hot standby or back and forth if we want to, and set the different uh, settings for state switch interval and maximum client lead time. If we go to the properties of IP version 4, go up to failover, we can see our failover relationships. So if I want to, let's say I want to add a scope to it, so I want to add this scope to that failover relationship, I can right click on it, configure failover, click next, type in dhcp02.itvscorp.com uh, and check this box, reuse existing failover relationships configured with this server. I can also do it via PowerShell. I could use the add dash dhcp server v4 failover scope commandlet and specify the name of the failover relationship and the scope ID that we want to add. If I want to force replication, normally it happens automatically, but if I want to force replication between my my two DHCP servers. I can right click on my scope here and go to replicate relationship. This action replicates the configuration of all failover scopes. So if I make a change to the scope and I want to replicate that change or force the replication, I can do that. Or I can right click and replicate scope. And this will give me all the information, lets me know the properties of the scope are identical, IP address range of the scope is identical. So basically it replicates the whole thing and lets us know the process of the replication, how it went. And if I want to do that with PowerShell, I can use the invoke-dhcp server v4 failover replication and specify the computer name that I want to run it against, the name of the failover relationship, and I can go ahead and run that. Now in order to configure our failover relationship here, I'll just use the get-dhcp server v4 failover commandlet. We can use the set dash DHCP server v4 com uh, commandlet and that'll allow us to set like the auto state transition, enable auth, a lot of these different parameters. Also if we wanted to create the failover relationship just with PowerShell we can use the add-dhcp server v4 failover, specify the computer name like we did with the GUI DHCP01, the name of the failover relationship, the partner server, the server role if it's standby, or load balance, and then the scope ID. Now if there's multiple scope IDs, we can just separate them with commas.